Hello, and welcome to Key Factor Community. I'm Sven, and today we're going to look at Bouncy Castle and the Kotlin project to get started with post quantum crypto. As you can see, we've got a whole new look and feel to the theme going. A big thanks to Karen over in Stockholm who helped me get the new slide together that we're using for the backgrounds and the Key Factor branding for Ryan Sanders, who also helped out with that. So, thank you both for helping me look sharp in our videos here. So let's jump over to the web browser first. So let's switch screens and bring that up. So we've got the web browser and we're going to go to the GitHub web page for the Bouncy Castle Kotlin project. So David and the guys there have this repo here with this free software we can use to generate post-quantum crypto certificates, keys, and they've got some documentation here. And we're gonna look at running through these steps of being able to build it, and running some of the scripts right there in that section. We'll do another video with the code for doing some hybrid certs. All right, so we'll start out with the terminal here. We're going to SSH to the Linux box. I'm actually using the box that we did for the very first video where I just did the Docker deployment of eGBCA community. So you can reuse this pretty much on any Linux box like this. And we're logged in. All right, next up, we're going to adjust the screen a little bit and we're gonna do some housekeeping of installing the Apple release, open JDK, RNG tools, unzip, Vim, and get these guys on there. So with RNG tools, we're going to reboot after that because if we do not have that installed, the key generation times can be quite lengthy especially for some of the Falcon I was playing with earlier and the Entru where it was taking five minutes to run these examples. So having the RNG tools installed and rebooting, you definitely want to do that. All right, so we reboot at that point, we'll log back in, and now we're going to install Snap. And Snap's going to be used for running the Kotlin part, so we'll get that installed. Next up, we need to download the Gradle. We need, actually, whoops, some link first. And then we're going to enable the SnapD service. There we go. And we're going to restart the service because what I found is restarting it, then when we actually go to install the Kotlin piece through Snap, we don't get that error that wait longer because the service might not be up. So restart. All right. Then we're going to get Kotlin installed now. So then after Kotlin's installed, we're going to go download Gradle. All right, here we go. Getting that done. Boom. So we'll curl to download Gradle. We need version 7 in that series. Otherwise, 8's not going to work with this. We're going to unzip it. The next thing we're going to add is an E and V variable for our path so we can get to the Gradle binary. All right, next up is using git to clone the Bouncy Castle Kotlin repo. So we'll clone that down. And we're going to CD into the directory. And the next thing we need to do is grab some libraries before we can compile this. So we're going to use the curl command to download three of the Bouncy Castle libraries. So we'll grab all three of these, and they're going in the Bouncy Castle jars reg directory like that. All right, now we can do Gradle build. So like the doc said, the Gradle build command, we run that. This will compile the Kotlin project here. So give that a few seconds to complete. There we go. So what do we got now at this point? Well, we've got Kotlin compiled. So let's do a little list here and see what we got. All right. And then the more interesting stuff that we're going to look at is in the scripts directory here. So we've got some examples here to do Dilithium, Falcon, Entru, and Sphinx plus keys. So first, we're going to go through, make a directory now for post-quantum certs where we'll generate all these to keep organized, and then we're going to CD over into that. And then we're going to play with Falcon first. So we're going to run that command here to generate some Falcon keys. And, well, actually, a key in a cert chain, so give that a few seconds here to run. And this is where that RNG tools comes in handy. All right. So we've got the certificate and a chain like this and a private key. So let's use some OpenSSL here to parse the private key and take a look at that. So we'll scroll back down and get our OpenSSL command. All right, so we can see the nice big blob we have there for the Falcon private key. And then let's parse the certificate and take a look at that next. 
All right, here's our cert, so we'll scroll up. And we can see it's a regular X509 certificate like that. Obviously, the algorithm doesn't work yet with OpenSSL, so we get the little unable to load the public key. But we have a post-quantum certificate with key like that. Pretty sweet. Next, we're going to go and do ntrue now. So we'll use the same command, but we're going to use the ntrue keys out of the scripts directory. And we can then parse the private key with OpenSSL. So we'll check that out. Very nice. And then we can also look at the public key. So we'll parse that guy. And there we go. So really quick, simple way like this to be able to issue post-quantum keys with Bouncy Castle Kotlin. Okay, we'll end the video here in Rio from one of my favorite locations to go get photos. But if you got any questions or comments, leave us a comment on the video like this. And we hope you enjoyed this. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.